Hello, I'm Rick Stivers. I'd like to welcome you to Young Martin's Reels. Today's project is going to be this Shimano Bait Runner 6500. And uh, those of you who have been following along know that it's very seldom that I actually uh, get to do a reel of this quality. Normally, things that I'm doing are uh, the low-end reels. And so this, this one, Ken brought me, and uh, we're going to go through it. It's perfectly functional. There's nothing wrong with this reel. Um, he just wants it serviced so that he can put it out, either use it or put it out there for sale. Uh, how, however, we're going to walk through the uh, operation of it just for a minute, and uh, we'll see what you think of it. <clears throat> for those of you who are unfamiliar with bait runners, how they work is this reel. If you want to set up to uh, put out bait and you don't want to be, you know, having your uh, rod pulled really hard, and uh, you want to give the fish a chance to run with the bait, you use a bait runner like this one. And what this does is when you've got it in bait runner mode, you flip this lever right here. Okay, when you do that, it takes almost all the drag off of the spool. And you can adjust that drag right here on this end. Okay, and the more you tighten it up, the tighter this gets, but it only goes so much. It don't, it's not made to be a really heavy drag. It's made to just put a little bit of tension on that line. Matter of fact, when you loosen it up, it's practically non-existent, okay? Um, now, what happens is you cast it out there and you put it into bait runner mode like this. Now, when you wind the handle like this, watch this, the lever down there. See there? The lever pops back up and now you're in drag mode. All right, now you've got a heavy drag. You can adjust this all the way down to where he's got no drag at all if you want. Um, it's a very tight drag system if that's what you want. And uh, we're gonna go through this one, get it cleaned up. And um, the only problem I know of on the entire reel is right here with the roller. And I'm gonna be trying to take that and clean it up a bit. It's uh, It's got some kind of crust all over it. And we're gonna see if I can take and polish that up. I uh, went out looking for parts, spare parts. Look at all that stuff. All that was encrusted on the uh, roller. And uh, I'm going to try to polish that up. Make sure there's no... Uh, it rolls actually pretty easily. And uh, But we want to clean that up. And so that not only does it roll easy, but there's no burrs or anything else on it. So we're going to polish that. All right, so let's get started on this bait runner. Uh, by the way, the anti-reverse on it is fully functional. It's got an instant anti-reverse, but it also is uh, uh, instant anti-reverse uh, override works. So there you go. And the bail flips on this beautifully. So there's nothing wrong with this except that we need to take it apart, clean it, service it, and get it back going again. All right, so we're going to start off by taking off the spool. Um, that is one thing that I did know, know about on this reel is that, um, the reel is still winding a little high right here, if you notice on it. And, um, I don't have the proper shim washer. I added one to it yesterday, trying to get it better and it's better than it was, but it's not as good as it can be, but I don't have another shim washer. Uh, I'm going to have to try to make one for it. Um, so that, uh, we'll see what we can do with that. All right, that's off. Now we're going to take the handle off and it just simply unscrews in a clockwise direction. Okay. And you can pull it down. Yeah, see, this is kind of gummed up a little bit. We'll put some oil on here and uh, slide this back up so that hopefully it'll start sliding better. There we go. So that this can be loosened and just drop down. Okay, it's a drop down handle. But it is tight. Okay, <clears throat> next we are going to um, take out these screws, but before we can do that, we've got a screw right here that we've got to try to take out. And it actually looks a little bit salt encrusted. So I'm going to give it just a small shot of WD-40. And uh, we'll see if I can't get that. Yeah, there it goes. Broke loose. 
There we go. Screws out. Now this should, one side or the other, this should pop off, most likely this side. We're gonna see if we can get this to pop out. There we go. And see this lever is actually in three pieces. You've got the two side pieces and one in the middle. All right, and then the screw holds all that together. We're gonna leave the other side on. There's no reason to take it off. And I'm gonna put the screw right there just so that it doesn't disappear. <clears throat> now we're going to remove these three screws. Now these three are fairly large and this one is a much smaller screw. So let's see if I'm gonna need to get a micro driver out for that. Now it doesn't look like it. Okay, but if you look, you'll see that is definitely much smaller than this screw. And now, <clears throat> this side plate should pop right up. There we go. There's our roller bearing on the side. This thing has three roller bearings in it. It's got one on each side and one up under here. And we're gonna go ahead and oil that roller bearing. And at the same time, we're gonna test it, make sure it turns freely, and it does. All right. Now, this is only the second bait runner that I have ever done. So we're gonna get in nice and close on this because this isn't something I'm familiar with. Okay, this is the bait runner assembly, and this lever right here is what pops this in and out. All right, you can see the lever come in and out right here. It's on this arm, okay, and I don't believe that it attaches. I think it just pops over it, and it's held in place by these two screws. So we're going to remove these two screws right here, and you got to be careful. There's a spring here. And there's another spring down inside here. We want to try to keep those from popping loose. So let's go ahead and see if we can take these two screws out without getting anything popped loose. All right, with those two screws out, this entire assembly here, I believe, will come up and out of there. I'm going to lift gently on this side over here first. Okay, now I'm gonna move to the other side and lift gently. Okay, now see that was spring loaded. As soon as it popped off of that stud over there, it popped up and out, okay? So there's a spring, there's tension held on this somewhere along the way. See, as soon as I pop that up, it pops back and out of the way. All right, we're gonna go to this side over here, pop it up. And now we're on this post right here. There we go. We're off of that post. And the whole thing lifts up and out. And let's take a look. We flip it over. All right. This one is greased. I've been told not to grease these, that you should oil them. But this one was greased. And I'm going to gently clean the grease out of there. And we're going to re-oil it. But uh, this is the spring right here that was holding everything. And let's take and clean the grease off of it so you can see the mounting for the spring. Now, just because this had grease in it doesn't mean it was supposed to be greased. It could be that somebody's been in here before me and they greased this. And I have been told that this assembly should be oiled. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time trying to flip this thing or move it because I'm afraid something will pop loose that ain't supposed to. All right, that's a spring that just fits over that stud right there and it holds that in place. And this spring over here, this is for the clicker that rides right here. All right. Okay, when that's upside down, that little pin right there is going to ride right on that clicker and go click, 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 click. All right. I'm going to go off camera for a second, clean this gently, and bring it back to you. Okay, it's all been gently cleaned now. 
all the grease is removed and we're going to oil it and uh, it's got parts that slide all over the place and we're going to oil them where they do slide there we go <clears throat> now that part moves freely in there this part moves freely and this part moves freely all right this is cleaned and ready to go back in when we're ready <clears throat> next thing i think we're going to want to do is to remove nope that cannot come out until we take out the um axle shaft so now we got to take the axle shaft out and this axle shaft is not an easy one to remove it's got two c-clips one in the front and one in the back now most of the clip design spinning reels that are built similar to this have it just a clip with a front and back clip on it that um will allow you to just lift it off but this one doesn't have that this one has a c-clip one on the front and one on the back and what you have to do is you have to get down on there and get hold of that clip and uh, spin it around to where you can get to the edge of it which is not that easy in itself and let's blow this up put it right on the camera action and see if we can what I'm gonna need is a different pair of glasses these are not strong enough to see all right with my magnifying readers I can now see that there's a clip right here and you guys can probably see it easily in the camera and you just need to get on the front and back of that push it down out of there There we go. That popped loose. It fell down inside. I'll have to get it out of there. There it is. See it right there? There we go. There's the C-clip that we're looking at. We've removed that, and there should be another one on the back side. And now that the front one is out, it's easier to get to the back one because it will now the axle will now move in and out and allow easier access I thought it came out that time, but it didn't. Now, an E-clip would be so much better here because you could get in behind the E-clip and pull it out. They got it. There we go. The clip is out. There comes the axle out. Okay, just slides right out. And that clip is laying down in there. I'll have to get to it. Now with the axle out, your gear will come out and give you a chance to look at it. And it actually looks pretty good with all the grease on it. We'll see what it looks like after I've cleaned it up. There's a shim washer right here, and you don't want to lose that because that gives you your proper spacing on your gear. <clears throat> I 
Now, the cross arm block will lift out. Okay, so far I do not see my C clip. All right, and the cross wind gear. And I still don't see my C clip. I'd hate to think I've lost it. There it is. It traveled a long way. It's all the way over here on this side. Well, not only did it not want to come off, now it doesn't want to come out. Now I've lost sight of it again. There it is. Now it's laying up against the sidewall right here. There we go. There's the little clip that's giving me so much trouble. All right, I'll sit it over here. <clears throat> now, we've got a bushing. It's right here. I don't know if it'll come out or not. It seems to want to stay, so we're going to leave it. All right, now, this assembly over here, there's really no need to take this apart. But, if for some reason you ever did take it apart, this gives you an opportunity to see how the spring is installed. And that would be a tough little spring to get back in there because it's, it's got a lot of tension riding on it. Um, so it's not one that you want to take off if you can help it. So let's leave it in there. Um, you know what? I've never done this before, but I think we'll go ahead and take this out, this trip lever, so that you can see how it goes back in. All right. <clears throat> All right, we're going to take this screw out, which is holding this clip right here. Here's the screw, and here's the clip right here. Now that clip slides in to a slot right here. See how it slides in? And that locks that part in. With that clip off, this will lift up. Now, as it lifts up, it's gonna wanna pull that spring up out of that hole. So what you wanna do is put your finger on that, hold it, so that it doesn't just shoot when it comes out of there. Tell you what, let's, uh, one of these should be an unloaded position. I think that's this position. I think it's more unloaded than this position. Okay, so let's, as we lift this up out of there, hold on to the spring. There we go. There you go. There's the assembly out. When we go to put it in, all we're going to do is just slip it right back down in there, into the hole, and slide that down, and that will... Put the tension back on the spring. Okay. With that done, this will all come out over here. Washer and all. There's a sleeve. And a washer. There we go. Now... Don't get me wrong, folks. I took that out because somebody out there is going to have it apart and are going to want to know how to put it back together. That's why I took that apart. There's no reason for most people to ever take that apart. So let's go ahead, before I forget how to put it back, and let's put that back. We're going to start off. Let's see, there's another washer in there. Oh, and a clicker. Well, that's pretty important. Okay, that's a cam assembly. And I didn't see how that cam assembly fits in there. 
So let's see if we can get this put back before something happens to it. All right. So we're going to put in the arm first. With the arm laying down in there, keep it way down at the bottom. Let's go ahead and put this cam assembly back in. And you're going to have to have it further down in there than that because it's got to get past this arm over here. Okay. So let's put... Oh, man. There's a right way and a wrong way for it to go in, too. So let's start off getting it in there. All right, lay it down in there. Let's add a little bit of grease down there for it to hold into. All right, somebody's gonna to wanna to know this. I really, really, really recommend never taking this apart if you can't help it. Okay, oh, got it on upside down. I believe it goes the other way. This is easier said than done by a long shot. All right, put the cam up. There, get it started on there. Then turn it, get it to drop down in there. Up. I don't want to get back in there. It snagged. Okay. Oh, it will not go in that way, will it? Not with this arm in the way. And I really don't want to take that arm off because it's spring-loaded. Okay, so it's got to drop down and then go in. There we go. And there it is. All right, that is the catch release for that arm. Okay, it's installed correctly now. All right, we're gonna come back. We're gonna add the washer back in. Add the sleeve back on, like so. And then we're gonna come back with this spring. Set the spring down in the hole there. And then, with the spring in the hole, we're gonna lower this down, this cam arm down, because we've gotta get the spring into this hole right here. Hope you can see, I'm gonna back out just a little bit right there. So that I'm hopefully staying in camera. Okay, the spring goes in the hole. And then this cam comes over and sits onto there. I'll tell you what, let's get that on, onto there first. There we go. There it's on. And now, let's try to get the spring in the hole. There it goes. Down in the hole. Now, drop the cam back down. And there we go. Keep that down. 
because it's they had a clip that has to go back on it. All right. <clears throat> so what do you think, Chris? Did I bite off more than I could chew? Almost looks like it, doesn't it, brother? <laughs> of course, I put it on from the wrong side. It will pivot. You just have to put it on from the correct side. Okay, let's come back, put it on from this side, like so, and then pivot it. Well, it's got to go on first. <clears throat> there we go. That puts the clip in place. All it needs is a screw to hold it in place. And if anybody ever tells you it's a good idea to take that part of the mechanism apart, tell them Rick Stiver said it's not. Leave it alone. Because all of that can adequately be cleaned just the way it stands. But I know that there's a reel in a bag somewhere out there where somebody took this all apart and now they can't get it back together. So that's why we did that. All right, now that's back together. The cam is now activating and deactivating the um, bait runner. Okay, we got that part. Now, I'm gonna come in here, add oil to the bearing. And we're going to take this part of this apart back here. All right. Uh, I understand that there's a this is a clip right here. And how we're going to get that clip to come out of there, I'm not real sure yet. Let's try. To see if we can get it to pop loose. Right here. There we go. Okay. This is a C-clip. Kind of a C-clip. It's got a long side and a short side. Okay. It's going to slide in right into that slot right there with this tapered side going towards the upper edge of the reel away from the reel seat. Okay. With that done, we're going to turn this in a clockwise direction. And that unscrews that. Okay, now we've taken this out and we'll have to take this apart and put new grease in the spring here to help this stay operational. Now we're going to look down in here and if you look inside here, you will see that this is basically an eared washer like we see in many spinning reels. Okay, it's got the two tabs on it. Okay, that's going to lock it to this piece right here. All right, we've got that out. Now this one in here, this is would be, I believe, the keyed washer. And if we look in here, well, it doesn't appear to be a key, does it? Okay, maybe it's not. All right, we got that one. We've got this Teflon washer, and we've got our clicker cog. And the last piece of that, is up here and again this is one of those parts that you don't want to take apart this is your bait runner assembly and it's got a spring load down in here and it's kind of like this thing you do not want to have to get into that if you can help it so we've gotten into it that far and we're going to put it clean it up a little bit and put it back so the first piece to go back in is going to be this clicker cog and it's got a drag washer sitting on the front side of it. So it actually should be separate from it. It's got a drag washer. So the drag washer goes first. And they're like so. Okay, behind that is gonna go your clicker cog. And it has a flat spot on it so that it will rotate with that assembly. There, there's your key right there. All right, slip that back in. 
There we go. On top of that, it's going to go this Teflon washer. That's our drag washer. And it doesn't need to be lubricated or anything else. Next, it's going to be this one that I thought looked like a keyed washer, but it doesn't seem to have a key on it. It just seems to uh, have a tab. And the tab, I don't see that it hits anything. So we're just going to sit it right back in there the way it was when it came out. Actually, if you look very closely, right in the bottom, you'll see a notch that that tab is supposed to fit into. I got lucky and got it into it, but uh, just pay attention to that. Like so. Okay, the next piece to go in is going to be our ear washer, and it's a little dirty. So let's wipe our excess grease off of that. And put a little bit of fresh grease on it. Not a lot, just a little. And the ears, these little ears here, are going to be pointing up. Okay, so sit that back in. Set it in place. Like so. And apparently that lines up with that other washer. There we go. All right. Next is going to go this tensioner spring. And it's going to fit back inside this piece. Just a little bit of grease on it. Put a little bit on the threads to keep them lubricated. And now this piece is going to sit. These two arrows, these two slots right here, have to line up with the two ears on the ear washer right here. Right, so let's come back in. Stick that back in place like so. Now we're going to come back and put our knob back on and it's going to screw back in in a counterclockwise direction. Tighten it down a little bit and now we're ready to put this C-clip back in. All the way down. Now we can loosen this or we can tighten it. Whichever way we want to go. All right, we're back up now to the rotor and we're going to take this screw out. I don't want to come out with that screwdriver. There we go. Let's zoom back out a little bit and we're going to need a socket. Okay, I'm going to unscrew that, pull the nut off, sit down, and off comes the rotor. <clears throat> and we've got kind of a greasy mess up under here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off yeah, this top assembly that locks into the bottom of the rotor, as well as this cam assembly here for your anti-reverse. Okay, we're gonna clean this up. Also, we've got a washer and a gear. Actually, I think the washer is part of the gear. It is, it's all one assembly. That is a clicker gear. Uh, that is for the anti-reverse, it appears. Just a spacer. <clears throat> Seems a little overkill for a spacer, but that's what it is. All right, now we've got this bearing retainer right here. We're going to take that out. Let's flip this lever to get that anti-reverse lever out of the way. All right, that removes these three screws, and that should remove this bearing retainer. Okay, and behind the bearing retainer, it should be the bearing and the pinion gear, and there's a sleeve here. Okay, so we're going to have to look at how that sleeve locks in because it has a tab on it so that it will lock into something inside here. Once we get this cleaned up, we should be able to see it. 
So I'm going to take a moment, go off camera, clean this grease out of here, and I'll be back in a minute and we'll figure out how this goes together. Okay, it took a minute to clean this up in here. And if you look very carefully up inside here, see that, that flat wall, right? That's coming from this side. See that flat wall right there? Okay, that flat wall is made for this bushing right here to fit up against. All right, so what you can do is you can go ahead, once you got everything cleaned up, you can take that bushing and go ahead and sit it inside here like this, and that locks it in place inside there. All right, so there's your bushing. <clears throat> I believe this bushing is chipped just slightly along the edge right here, but I don't think that's going to matter. I don't think it makes any difference. Okay. Let's clean up our pinion gear and our bearing. And our bearing is a not a sealed bearing, but it is a shielded bearing. So we're going to go ahead and drown it real good with oil. And let it sit there. I believe, yep, there's a, some shim washers on top of it. Okay. All right, I did the smart thing. I went back and checked the video as I took this apart. It's all, yes, these two shim washers go on the outside after the bearing is reinstalled. So let's, I'm going to clean this up and I'll be right back to you. Now the pinion gear is cleaned up and is stained, but it is not damaged in any way, shape, or fashion. So it looks really good. We're going to go ahead and grease it and put it back in. We've got a little grease on the, we got a little grease on the end right here and that's good. Now we're going to set the bearing back on, and that bearing has already soaked up all of that oil that we put in it. So we're going to put it on, drop it down. Let's go ahead and give it another drink of oil, because it's pretty apparent that it was dry in there. <clears throat> we're going to come back, set the bearing back in place, and get it into that bushing. Okay. Once that's done, slide it down. Set your shim washers back in place, like so. Set your bearing retainer ring back in. And we're going to start putting these screws back in. All right, wipe off any excess grease. We're going to come back and clean this up a little bit because it hasn't been cleaned. Get the excess grease off of it. And we're going to add some oil. Put a little oil under it. And this almost looks like I got a little salt water corrosion right here. So let me see if I can clean that off. Yep, that's exactly what that is. And we want to prevent. We want to prevent that from spreading. So we're going to come back and add some grease over the top of that. So that if any salt water does get on there, it's just going to sit on top of the grease until it dries off. It's not going to uh, do any damage there. <clears throat> Next, we're going to put this spacer back on. It's got the flats in it. And the flats have got to line up with the flats on the shaft, slide that down. Next is going to be the spacer. Let's tell you what, let's put these two together to put this back together. This is a three piece assembly. You've got a spring right here, which you can, the spring is removable if you needed to. If you needed to, you could remove the spring off of here, but we don't need to. Okay. We're going to line this up and put this back onto here like so. All right, and do I have it backwards? I believe I do. I do. I've got this on upside down. What happens if you put this on like this? I'm going to show you. Take a moment and show you what happens if it, you put it on backwards like it is. Slide this down. What happens is when your anti-reverse is trying to work like so, it can't pull this gear in to the gears and it just slips on. See? it got the gear on backwards. 
So make sure that you put this gear on properly. Okay, so flip it over like so, like that, and then slide it down. And then this spring right here has got to go over this post right here. You have to open it up just slightly to get it to fit down over it. Because it's got a slot that it's got to fit into. Like that. Okay, and that's what holds that in place. Now, what happens if you're in anti-reverse? See how that works? How that gear is in the right position now? The way it was, it wouldn't work. <clears throat> okay. Make sure that spring is in the slot. All that's taken care of. Let's see, do we have anything else here? No. Okay, that's going to bring us over to this rotor. And we've got to try to clean up this roller assembly on the rotor. And what I'm going to do is we're going to unscrew this. Lift it up. And I'm going to zoom in on it so you can see it better. Okay, so we have the screw, like so, okay, we have <clears throat> this assembly, which fits into there, it's a spacer, then we've got this roller, like so, and that should have a, sp yeah, it's got a spacer inside it, okay, <clears throat> and that spacer did not want to come out. All right, now I'm going to take this piece, which looks so bad. All right, I put it for about a minute and a half, two minutes into some hydrochloric acid, and that kind of took some of the corrosion off of it. And what I'm going to try to do now is see if I can polish it using a little uh, metal polish on a buffer wheel. What do you think? I think that roller is going to be just fine now. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I think I don't think it's going to cut any line. <clears throat> so before we put this back together, let's go ahead and show you how to reset this spring on this in the event that you had to take it apart. That screw out, this comes off, okay, and it does, this spring right here fits inside this pinhole right here, all right, now let's go ahead and remove the side plate so you can see how the rest of this fits inside here, there's nothing more than a, than a spring, okay, that makes this one really easy, this was an easy design, okay, All right, let's take the other side apart. There's no spring in there, so there's no, there's nothing in this side to service. You can take the, there's a C-clip on this side that you can pop off and pull this off if it's dirty and full of grease. I'm not going to take that off. It's pointless. I, I've shown you how to do it, so um, we're not going to get into that. All right, so let's go ahead and put this back the way it belongs. We'll move that arm out of the way for a moment. Let's come over here. This pin of the spring has got to fit into this hole right here. This pin on this arm has got to fit into that hole right there. And this shoulder boss right here has got to fit into that slot right there. So what you do is you line all those things up and it's gonna be spring loaded. So you've got to deal with that. Let's get the spring into the hole first. Once you've done that, bring this around Put that shoulder into the hole. Okay, then rotate it around until that ball slips into the slot. And there you go. So that all you've got left to do is put the screw back in. 
Okay. There you go. Then it's spring loaded. Then we're going to come back over to this one and set it back in here. Now we need to see if this wire bale is sprung a little bit. And it seems, almost seems to be, but it's not. Okay, it's okay. All right. <clears throat> so, how does things go back together here? We're going to come back to here. We are going to slide this roller onto this sleeve right here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is make sure that this sleeve is clean. And then we're going to put some oil on it. We're going to slip the roller onto that and then turn it with the large side out. See the small side of the plastic is there. And then slide that back onto this post right here. Okay. With that done. Come back to here. This piece has to fit back up inside, small end in into this hole right here. Once you've done that, all of this fits back together there and you put your screw back in. And you tighten it down. Now, your roller should roll and it does. There you go. <clears throat> With the rotor cleaned, we can come back and slip it back on. The flat side, remember it's got two flat sides on the hole. It's got two flat sides here. Slide those on. Line them up. And it should sl slide right on. <laughs> Don't over tighten it, just nice and snug. Okay. Once you've got that snugged, you can come back and put your lockdown screw back in. And that should hold that nut from loosening up. That brings us back to reassembly of the internals. Now, the first thing you're going to want to put in going to be your crosswind block. Sorry, crosswind gear. Okay. And you're going to want to grease up the teeth on it. Rides against the crosswind block. So all of that rides together to create a fair amount of friction if you don't have it properly lubricated. Crosswind gear is installed. <clears throat> Crosswind block should be greased like so. Next part to go back in is going to be your main gear. And we're going to go ahead <clears throat> and grease the teeth on the main gear. All right, on the back side of this <clears throat> is this spacer that I took off during cleaning. And that's going to want to, <clears throat> that's going to want to fall off. So put a little bit of grease on the shaft just to help hold that in place while you're maneuvering around the reel. There's a spacer and there's a shim washer. Okay, make sure they're on there. Now, this is going to fit down inside here. It goes into the bearing on that side and then drops down in and now comes the hard part this is where the axle shaft has got to go back in here remember how much difficulty i had getting those two c-clips well we're going to have just as much difficulty i believe putting it back together <clears throat> i'm going to put a little grease on the shaft not a lot Try to wipe most of it off because if you don't, when you insert it into the hole here at the front, it's all going to scrape off. So slide it in, get it to go into the crosswind block right there. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, it goes into the crosswind block. 
then it's going to go back here and it has to go into your bait runner drag. And I've got to get it to go into the hole. There it goes. Once it goes into the hole, then you're going to slide it back. And if you look, you'll see there's our two slots that the C-clips go in. And as difficult as it is, we're going to have to install those two C-clips back in there. go that's both of them in oh, it was easier than I thought it only took like six attempts <clears throat> now we are back to installing this assembly which I've lubricated good it's got plenty of oil on it now and what we're gonna do bring it back here I think it's got to go on this post first let's we're gonna flip this lever back to bring this post out Okay, we're going to bring this down and try to put it on, yeah, we're going to put it on this post first. Then I'm going to push it down a little bit and see if I can get it to go onto this post over here next. There we go. It's onto that post. And to try to help hold that in place, I'm going to go ahead and put this screw in part of the way enough to try to help hold that in place all right now this arm here has got to go over this post like so okay that was easy enough all right and if you remember correctly this was spring-loaded and we had to push it forward to get it to drop onto that one okay and it is This is going to be easier than I thought. All right. In the event that we are in bait runner mode, this is down. Okay. When this rotates, it comes down and this post right here catches right there on this lever and begins to push this back. And you see right there? It rotates it back, boom, and takes us out of bait runner mode and into drag mode. Flip it back down. We're back in bait runner mode. Bring it down. It catches. There you go. All right, and that's going to work much better once the arm is back in. That's our side plate is in. All right. That oil soaked in nicely into the bearings. So let's do it again. Let's turn it over. Put it back onto the side plate. And you're going to need that down all the way to get that arm, this one, to go back on there. All right, so that's down. Let's start off by putting the small headed screw. Now, we're going to put our lever back together. All right, slip this back onto that shoulder. Slip this back in right here. It's got to go back together. Like so. All right, slide the handle back in, crank it down, anti-reverse is on, anti-reverse override, good. 
Turn it into bait runner mode. There we go. Let's check our bail. There we go. All flips well. Uh, the only thing I got left that I see here is I've got a gap here. I oiled this and that and took it apart a little bit. And now it doesn't want to seem to go all the way back in. So let's go back and see if there's something I did. There it goes. That got it to go back in there, right? Now let's tighten it down. Okay, that looks much better. Okay, that brings us down to the spool. Run right underneath there. Okay, now remember, side that goes up is the side's got this lip. The side you can tell right here where the uh, where the screws dug into it from the outside. All right, next thing we're gonna do is take out our drag washers. And these are all felt washers. Okay. Well, this should go quickly. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this out. All right, <clears throat> to put this back together, we're gonna install a one of these felt washers, oil it well. We're gonna put in a keyed washer, which is one's got the rectangular center. We're gonna put in on top of that another felt washer. Put in an eared washer, one with two little ears off the ends of it. Kind of looks like a human head with ears. If it didn't have a nose mouth. And then put in the last keyed washer. Once that's done, we bring our rubber grommet, our hold down, drop, slide it back in here. I would recommend matching the screw heads up with where they were once on there so that you're not dismangling it all around. Let's zoom back out. With that done, we're going to go ahead and put a spacer on here. I'll tell you what, I'm going to see if I can't come up with a better spacer than this. Okay, I did come up with one. The hole might be a little small. I might have to ream it out just slightly to get it to go on, but let's try it out. I believe we'll get the job done. All right, now on the bottom of the spool, you got your cl clicker. And these things, I don't know how many times I have found these all corroded up from salt water. And people just never think to oil or lubricate them. So if you'll take and put a little oil on that or grease, either one, that'll help a lot to keep that from happening. Okay. The last part to go back on is the knob. And you got to line up the flats on that. All right. There we go. Let's put it into bait runner mode. We should be reasonably loose, but let's go ahead and loosen it up on the back. There we go. Okay, that adjustment works beautifully. Okay, wind it. That released bait runner mode. Now we've got really tight drag. We can loosen that up a little bit. Okay, there we have the Shimano Bait Runner 6500. So that is. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you dislike the video, hit the dislike button. But tell me what it is about the video that you didn't like. Um, if you uh, would like to see further videos like this, by all means, hit the uh, subscribe button. And uh, if you want notifications that when new ones come out, hit the notification button. For now, that's Rick Stivers of the Young Martins Reels, signing out.